in post-production, I've decided to add this slide because there are those that are going to argue a two monument tango or record boundary is acceptable. And it's part of their standard of care in their local jurisdiction. I'll tell you it's not true and let's look at a complaint. Today's program is concerning the mapping of monuments. This is one of a series of programs concerning monumentation. The surveyor has performed the research, recovered the monuments, got their measurements, and now they need to be mapped. We'll start first by talking about monuments. Monuments are the best evidence of the location of boundaries. Monuments, in a general sense, trump measurements and certainly trump the underlying map as, as far as order, orders of priority. This is uh, recognized in the courts and it's also recognized in the California Civil Procedure, Section 2077, which says that monuments are paramount to measurements, uh, area and surface. It's important that these monuments get mapped and documented correctly. One of the things that I see on occasion that I don't quite understand is I see surveyors showing measurements to monuments as measured and record to the hundredth and to the second. This is highly unlikely the case in the field. And I don't understand that if you're not going to hold your measurements, what are you holding or why are you bothering to measure? I don't understand that. If the surveyor has taken the time to recover the monuments and perform the measurements, I don't understand why they wouldn't hold those measurements or at what point do you hold your measurements over the record. I would encourage all surveyors to hold your measurements as opposed to record, particularly if the measurements don't agree with record. It's of little significance if you're off a minute or a few, few hundredths or a tenth. It's better to leave a good record of where that monument was found than to comport with the existing record. Why are monuments so important and why do the courts hold them? Well, because the monument is a physical representation of the legal property corner. People from the public recognize a monument. They rely on that monument. They build fences to that monument. Remember, boundary lines are invisible to most people. You can't physically see them, touch them. Additionally, most people can't read a surveyor's map. Bearings, distances, tenths of a foot. Therefore, the monuments are what the public would rely on. And that's why the courts rely on them also. There is a contingency of land surveyors out there that will take a CAD drawing drawn up in record. And then when they go out and do their field measurements, they rotate that drawing onto the monuments and place everything in record. Well, of course, we all know that the monuments don't fit record. And this is not the right procedure because once you have monuments, the record is of little significance unless you're prorating. What I would advocate is you have your record calculations, you have your record figures, but when you start mapping and you bring these points into AutoCAD, they should be in their own drawing. The, the original underlying record really is a, not of much use at this point, and you would connect node to node, monument to monument, and then this would establish the preliminary boundary lines. And then once they're established and you look at the evidence as a whole, then you'll decide which monuments to call off, for instance, if they were to encroach into a senior right. But where a lot of surveyors get into trouble is they take this record figure and they rotate it onto uh, the found monuments, and of course, they don't fit ideally. And this creates a situation that looks very similar to this. You have two monuments approximately 70 feet apart right here. Each one is called off. You have 24 hundredths easterly, presuming north is to the top, and 22 hundredths westerly. So between the two monuments, approximately 70 feet apart, you have almost half a foot. And yet, this surveyor takes this map, which came from an underlying map, and produces it several hundred feet north. And even though you can't see the balance of the map, they went several hundred feet west and they set monument corners at each one of these corners. This is in no way land surveying. You will not find this procedure in any of the textbooks that we learned or that we, that we study. 
and yet this is how it's done. This is rotating a record figure to coordinates to produce a boundary. This doesn't take into consideration the rights, the rights of the adjoiners. This is simply math on the ground and is wholly unacceptable. If you're doing this, knock it off already. Another example of this is in this shown in this map. What we have here is the entire map is shown on this slide and a blow up is shown on this slide. And if you look closely, what you see is this surveyor held a nail and tag in the driveway and it shows held. Then this monument, they did do a nice detail, was held for line, but it was called off for 700s. Interesting. They turn record angle per the underlying map and they call this mon monument here, shown in this detail, A as off for line and direction, something similar to this, the line being here. This is what rotating CAD drawings to monuments look like. A particular monument is shown right here. Suppose this monument was in, this monument, and maybe several more going this direction. And let's say all these monuments lined up. Would this monument still be off? Of course not. Is it off now? Of course not. This record dimension has little meaning to, to this survey. And to call it off 700s, it doesn't make any sense. Going back to the drawing, what the surveyor did is held this monument, held this monument for line, checked it to this one, calling this one off, then proceeded to establish this property, this particular road, and monumented this property. This is math on the ground. Makes you wonder, what about the adjacent owner? You'll see that these are from the same tract. What happened to proration? What about any excess or deficiency? Well, when you only have two monuments, one only held for line, you do not find excess or deficiency. Therefore, you do not recognize or verify the underlying rights. This is negligence. The correct solution would be to hold this monument, to hold this monument, to hold this monument, absent any other information, and to go this direction to establish additional properties. It's already sketchy to go across the road and in a public right-of-way from another block. However, there could be more information. Additionally, when you see a survey like this, this is a record of survey, it was filed. Why is there no notes here saying search found nothing? Search found nothing. Every county surveyor should demand search found nothing if there is a potential of a monument being there that could alter the location of this particular boundary. This is a good example of what not to do. This next survey is, is particularly egregious in that this particular survey lies up here in the northeast quadrant of section 24. To give you a sense of it, the range line is actually right here, the easterly line of this particular property. This surveyor found two monuments, as detailed down here, illegible. One thing that's concerning is there's over half a foot in 250 feet. That's not too much concern when you consider that those monuments are actually over here in 18. So this particular survey surveyor surveyed from a presumably a residential property across the range line to establish this boundary line here. This is a gas station. It was an ALTA. One of the better things about this survey is this particular surveyor lost his license for doing these kind of surveys, as he should. Again, this is a CAD drawing, rotated, record figure. This is not acceptable practice. And mapping monuments generally means holding monument to monument to monument, evaluating them against the other evidence, determining the, the property rights, the allocation of those property rights, and then establishing the boundary. In post-production, I've decided to add this slide because there are those that are going to argue a two-monument tango or record boundary is acceptable. And it's part of their standard of care in their local jurisdiction. I'll tell you it's not true, and let's look at a complaint. In this particular complaint, the, sur the surveyor didn't find all of the records pertaining to the property in doing the research. 
And more importantly, in, in the context of this discussion, the surveyor did not locate monuments or improvements. As you can see here, it says that a diligent search is made for all monuments of record and other physical objects and improvements that might impact the establishment of the project boundary. Notice the word all. At the end of the day, the board found this particular surveyor to be negligent in that he did not meet the standard of care in a field survey. So if you're finding only two monuments and you're calling it a day, negligent, incompetent. In the event that you find one of these surveys in your local jurisdiction, you should get that to the licensing board post haste. Obviously, not all monuments fit or could be held all the time. So what is the proper way to call off a monument? Cut off from the legal corner to the monument, not the monument to the corner. When you show graphically, as this surveyor did, in, as you see on the screen, then the direction is less important because you actually show the scale. So in this case, the surveyor on the written description calls it off from the corner to the monument. However, chose to show the cardinal direction from the monument to the corner in the graphic. If you're going to call a monument off, it's nice to have a detail and it's also a good chance for the licensed surveyor who's signing the map to verify that the technician understood the proper way to call off a monument. It's unlikely to have it wrong in both instances. This is a good example of of mapping. Another thing for the licensed land surveyor to consider is when you find a monument that doesn't have a tag but it's being accepted as controlling, that surveyor should think about tagging that monument. In fact, that was the board policy in 1974 when this came up. The reconsideration was in 1991 that the, you're not required to tag the monuments. However, it is good practice. Specifically, what the 1974 board memo said was that corner monuments, when found, used and accepted as the corner by a professional civil engineer or land surveyor, should be perpetuated by placing his identification tag on the monument if no tag is affixed at the time he uses the monument. I would encourage everybody to tag monuments accepted as control. We all benefit from the consistency in mapping, county to county, jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Holding monuments is good practice in almost every instance. Tagging monuments is good practice in almost every instance. So I'm asking you to put away the clown shoes, pack away the mini bikes, and let's work together to raise the standard of care in California. Thank you and have a nice day.